Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of Re Wonderland The Mask and the Maiden. Written by A.S. Hunt. Read by yours truly, Free Water, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Y'all, last time we finished up chapter five, which actually this is about the halfway point. I know these seem like it's it's only a few chapters for this book overall, but man, it's got a lot of meat per, between the Baroness getting kidnapped, Alice, well, she's got those cards now, she's doing her thing, you know, her wood, staring, the last thing was talking about, glared at, at her would-be captor, you know, she's, she's finally like, I'm not going to take this baloney today, so let's see, let's see where this all culminates and goes off to in chapter six. Decide, or swine amongst spice. In my many writings and studies and annotations of the world and its sub-worlds and their people that I have encountered, I have received many a request from noticing readers there is a lack of detail about my own character. I have a great biography available, but only six copies exist, as my views are not wont to side with those of any political leader in the realms and my story is told in great detail there. One ringy dingy biography of the Bellman, Herbstch Press, bin 5003446.b. I must say that I'm not quite changed enough to repeat the process and enlighten anyone of variances that exist betwixt my now and former self. But I will gl gladly repeat a fact from that book that I hate to waste space and prefer writing only about the moment and the realm. These two are my favorite things. The Bellman from the Mirror perhaps ranks eighth. However, in this moment, I am quite at ease, smoking the Mersham, hearing commoner a AVA flipping about, the stupid ones hitting tunnels, the smarter ones maintaining their anger. I am able to reflect a little more on things beyond my moment, because I have already recorded it, and I must say I disagree with the opinion that I do not give enough detail about the Observer. You can tell more about how someone observes things than they can rightly tell you and claim it to be truth. You can tell more about someone by the way they describe and categorize others than when they do the same for themselves. As for an update to my character, I suppose I can share that, while it is a known fact that reading fiction is a chief hobby of mine, I find the sixth chapter of any given work to be the most disturbing. If a work has failed to grip me in its first five, then the sixth will finish the job staining me forever with the depths of the tale. If it is not, then I am as well off burning the book, doing everyone else a favor by taking it out of history, putting the tale out of its undeserved misery, cursing the writer with every blackened page. It is in this rare occasion, dear reader, that I will also share that no book should be without at least two chapter names, and any distinct section of chapter possibly assigned its own number, and in the longer cases a subtitle. Journal of the Bellman, Reprieve, first of Dodgson and 186th Grand Cycle. Where are you from? He asked, in a childlike voice that took her by surprise. She was too stunned to speak right away. My name is Pig. I can't see out of my left eye. I live in the Ninth Ward with my sister and my mom. Where do you live? Ashley could only look at him in wonder. Understanding him clearly, but not sure how to answer the question. Um, uh... She stood up, shakily, looking down the slanted edges of the roof. The boy didn't seem concerned, as if he'd been here before, or often. Do you like aplums? He asked, reaching into his pocket. He held out his hand, offering her a piece of the starchy fruit. She took it greedily and gobbling it down before noticing her unkindness. I'm, uh, thank you, she mustered between bites of the fruit. Thank you, said the boy. Your name is Thank You? Slightly embarrassed, Ashley began to respond, but Pig held up his hands laughing. I'm only kidding. How old are you? Why are you dressed like a maid? You must work for someone really rich. No one could afford maids at the Vale. Ashley concluded the boy was a bit younger than she after all. His manner was much too boyish for him to be older than Dina. I'm not sure how old I am, she finally replied, but I'm older than you. Here she hesitated, wondering if there would be repercussions for saying it. 
so you can call me Miss, and my name is Twenty. The boy looked a little confused. Miss Twenty? That's very strange. But that's okay, my name is Pig. That's a strange name for you, right? Our mother insists they sound perfectly normal, though. He sat a little ways from her, looking around. What are you doing up here? She asked, a little annoyed. I came because I saw you climbing up our ladder. Ashley blushed. Oh, so that's your ladder? And that is your house, then? Of course it was much too large to be a simple house, and she hadn't yet learned what an apartment building was. The boy looked confused and laughed. This isn't our house. It's a wall. It's like a lot of houses all put together like blocks. Don't you live in one? Hardly anyone can afford a house. Maids never buy houses. Ashley blushed again, this time feeling indignant. She stood up, brushing herself off, and carefully started back for the ladder. I'm off, she said flippantly. Enjoy spying on people. I'm not spying, called the boy after her. Hey, wait, where are you going? I need higher ground, said the girl. I need to find... Hey now, don't you know where the Lapine station is? The place where the caravan goes? The boy's blue eyes widened. Cripes! Why would you need to go there? This time of day you get the bad protesters. The ones who stand at the gates and throw shit and rotten fruit at the caravan. And the workers. I don't like the traders because they look a bit scary. But I wouldn't throw anything at them. I don't... Hey, come back! I'll tell you where they are. Ashley stopped again. Already halfway down the ladder. I would like that, pig. If you could just go ahead and explain it to me, I'm sure I can make it there on my own. Thank you very much. But you'd get lost, replied the boy. Then the bullies would run you down. I've dealt with some bullies, you know, said Ashley, unsure of whether this was entirely accurate. But I guess as long as we arrive quickly, you can come. The boy winced. Okay, I'll take you a part of the way there and you can go the rest. But you have to tell me. Of course, he struggled to keep up with her going down the ladder. Because I'm not getting mixed up in that crowd. It's crazy you even want to go. You want to go to my house instead? We could play this new awesome card game I bought in the blue market. It's a two-player game, but I can't get my little sister to play it with me. Her name is... And he struggled again to catch his breath as she ran ahead of him. Pepper! Now wait a minute. I'm not supposed to be showing you where to go. You could be going the wrong way. This way only goes in one direction, shouted Ashley, eager to get any intersection, get to an intersection and try to figure out where to go before being told. The presence of someone else that she didn't have to work for or serve in any way was refreshing, and she felt an odd sense of superiority, which she thought meet to exhibit for as long as he should choose to follow or lead her. She turned to find him gone, though the only path would have been up the ladder now. It was very frustrating to hear him laughing at her. You can make yourself visible now, you know, she said, which as much faux impetuousness, impetuousness as she could muster. I'm right here, he replied, surprising her with a tap on the shoulder. I told you you'd get lost. Ashley had some time ago resigned to the fact that nothing was as it appeared in her life, and so was not surprised to learn that she wasn't in a straight alley, but a series of alleys that ran parallel to each other with gaps between the wall that were indistinguishable because of the damned repeated brick pattern of the points beyond. Pig had apparently sidestepped into such a gap and then went around her. This was most trying, and the girl felt it appropriate to communicate this with a punch to the boy's shoulder. Ouch! Ashley and Pig, at his instruction, navigated the alleyways for a few minutes, Carefree as they pleased. Ashley saw the walls had windows, presumably the backs of the apartments. There were a great many of them. Ashley thought to ask the obvious, What do all these people do if there are no maids in this town? Depends, says the boy. There's a part of town where the merchants go to set up their stands every day. Let's go, exclaimed Ashley. Can't, replied Pig. The mayor has called a meeting there for all the townsfolk. Mom, I mean, never mind. But we can't go until the crowd goes down a little. Why on earth can't we be part of the crowd? 
you don't want to be in the middle of that. We can pass the time for an hour or so, then we can go. What are we going to do to pass the time? The boy smiled wide, of course. This, Ashley, could not see. Pig's room was smelly, despite being nearly empty. The floor was hard and uncomfortable, and a mat occupied the corner. His flat had been an alley and a corner away and easy to get to, but the girl would never be able to pick it out of the lineup of apartments, which all looked so alike. And without any discernible numbering system, how on earth was a letter to arrive anywhere here? Maybe they don't get letters, the girl thought, bored. Ashley yawned, tired of the game after playing six more times, and finding herself wishing the rules could be changed. But the boy was firm, setting up the pieces the same way each time, until night was nearly in full session. The setting sun's rays only reached the main avenues of the city now, leaving the alleys dark up to an hour earlier. Pig hadn't shut up about the goings-on and how-tos since she had told him she wasn't from the area. She was tiring quickly of his trivia. From what she could gather, the chief authority of the town was referred to as the Arcona, and it had been the same for the last 15 grand cycles. When an opponent ran against him, the candidate would mysteriously disappear by election day, to which facts Ashley, of course, asked what Arcanus and elections were. The migrating AVA had chose to circle around Lacey Vale for the last 50 grand cycles. Now, rather than fly directly above it, he also explained to her, though he was unable to explain why. Ashley took her turn by drawing a card, unfortunately a low-numbered one, and moved her strongest piece forward two spaces. He comfortably let her irritation show. Why don't you go play with your brothers or friends or whatever, and let me go? Pig isn't a good subject. Wait, what am I thinking? Priorities. Priorities, the girl accidentally said out loud. What? queried Pig. Sorry, thinking. She thought herself a little imperial sounding. At first sundown, Pig will take me to Fury's Gate because curse my terrible memory and sense of direction. And then I will tell the engineer that the Baroness is in trouble. He should help. Surely it's not legal for that fat worm to hold her as a prisoner. Then we'll get back. Doubt set in. What if it doesn't happen? I'll stay here? This was a comforting thought. But her only, her only pursuers had been Holmes, who just wanted to send her to a gal for a night. No. Something seemed wrong. She didn't belong here. Not right now. Her friend. Her best and only friend. Dina was at the Mad's Castle mansion. There was no way she was safe, not in the least. And right now it felt more than right to save them both from that existence. We need to leave when the first sun sets so you can show me where Fury is. What's Fury? asked Pig, looking disappointed. The cavern, I mean, said Ashley, cursing its existence. Oh, I can take you where they park it. That's easy. Why do you need to wait until then? I'm being looked for right now, she explained. I can't show my face yet, especially around that part of town. The boy was pulling out boxes already, opening them up and taking out small pieces, placing them discriminately on dirty and stained boards. Games, said Pig. This one will take 15 minutes to set up and 20 to 30 to play. Then this one we can play twice. The rules are really simple, and we can play that one twice in an hour. I can set it up in five minutes each time. After the events of the day, here Ashley was, about to be overwhelmed in the confined space of Pig's smelly room by his board games. By the time we're done, I can take you to the square. Oh, by the time we're done, I can take you to the square. It's a win-win. The girl sighed. The boy explained that the game was called Valst, named after the city that it originated from. Ashley asked him if he meant that they invented the game there. No, Pig replied. There was actually a wall between the enemy encampment and the defense, and they both had soldiers over the wall on the fields to wipe out each other's bases. Pretty cool, huh? She did think that was rather interesting. So the armies were pretty small then, she said, spying a piece of paper that had fallen out of place while the boy had been wrestling with the boxes. She grabbed at it and examined the foreign words. Their units were split into divisions of one and eight, replied the boy. That's why there are two sizes of peace. 
and on the bottom of each piece, you can read the name of each soldier. What's about the ape soldier pieces? asked the girl, eyeing the wording on the base of the piece the boy eagerly held in front of her face. Just their initials, but the book that comes with the game explains who they are. I have lots of books about battles. He rattled on about his books, for a moment, until the girl interrupted him. She was vaguely aware she hadn't really paid any attention. Can you read this? she asked. It's my reminder, the boy sighed. He then went on to recite without looking. Speak not to your boy at all, but beat him if it pleases. Offer not love and kindness, but hope in bits and pieces. To please you he shall work each day, and beg and plead till fed. But only smile through clenched jaws, and beat him before bed. If new toys catch its boy shy, blacken it with haste. Supplement all playtime with dolls of moldy paste. For schooling it is plain to see that boys will ha not have use. Hit with books and desks instead, triangles obtuse. Then you'll see the- Please enough, interrupted the girl again. Sorry she'd asked. Sorry she'd been impatient at all. It was indifferent. She sighed again. She could do worse than play games. But the boy looked down. I guess I can take you to the square now, he said. The change of the guard will be soon. I think we can get by if I distract them and you slip. No, said the girl sharply. This isn't your business. I don't want to drag you into something that could get you hurt. Or worse. I'll be fine, the boy said blankly. I do this all the time. Then I'm sure your mother doesn't approve, replied Ashley. I'll take you, if you win this round. Ashley reached over the board and overturned Pig's Emperor. Hey, he exclaimed. I win, declared Ashley ready to leave. Take me before I do the same to you. So the two went without further deliberation, the girl staying close to the boy to make sure he didn't try anything that would hinder their progress. In short order, they were to close to the bustling streets, and the chatter of people could be heard just beyond another corner. You're the first friend I've had in a long time, said the boy. Well, the first that acts like you- Shh, hissed the girl, putting a finger to his lips. The crowd of people was easily heard now. Ashley thought- they might even be just around the alley corner going back out to the streets. But a word and a voice had caught her attention and made one of her ears involuntarily twitch. It was the voice of the Lepidoptera the fiend was talking to another character, a male who had a very high voice and a clear accent, though it wasn't clear to the girl at all where he was from. She waited for some time for them to repeat the word she had heard as her chest knocked in anticipation. There was no being sure of anything they were saying above the crowd. I want to get closer, she whispered to the boy. How we were doing that, said Pig, not picking up on the hint of stealth. You edging, she hissed. Be quiet. I want to get closer to the two men talking with funny voices. One of them has my friend. She furrowed her brow at the choice of words, but the boy needn't know anything of import. It was a chore to get around the crowd now. It had doubled in size and the noise and chatter tripled. The girl was quite sure that neither of the guards would happen upon her in this mess, so she took Pig by the hand and began to lead him out. And this lasted a moment until she realized he was supposed to be leading, as she didn't have an idea, any idea where Fury was, or where they were, for that matter. He grinned, and she could see that he was blushing. Cheeky little bastard. We're going the right way, actually. Let's keep going. They went on, Ashley feeling irritated and a little embarrassed at being fancied by someone so obviously younger than she. He led her through another alley, and another, this time dirty with compost, and another, this time free of hominid garbage, but full of plants. The just one more... And she could see at the end of it, there was something like foliage at the end, or a forest, a field, city limits. Where are you taking me? You're really fun, said Pig. I really, really hope you can be happy. I'll take really good care of you and play games all the time. Ashley couldn't say what it was that knocked her unconscious. And that, my friends, was the end of the first part. Of chapter six. Woo!
Wait a minute. So Pig. Pig be wildin' actually. I mean, he definitely gave like a creepy a creepy vibe for sure. But uh I did not think that kind of vibe, you know? So we'll see. Okay, so now the Baroness and Ashley are both captured, and we'll just have to see what happens in the next part. So y'all make sure to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next part.